I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is an example of what's known as an abnormal Michael reaction. The first step in this reaction is going to be to deprotonate this alpha carbon hydrogen, which is going to be highly acidic due to the presence of this carbonyl ester and also the cyano group. So sodium ethoxide can be used as a base, which is going to allow us to deprotonate that alpha carbon hydrogen, making our enolate species by kicking up these pi electrons. So then we can redraw what the product of that transformation might look like, where now we have formed a negatively charged oxygen here, we have an alkene at this position, and then we still have this cyano group here. And this is going to be a softer nucleophile than something like a Grignard reagent, which might add at this position and do what's called a 1-2 Michael addition. Instead, when these electrons come back down from this oxygen, this is going to make the carbon position here a nucleophile, which is instead going to act as a 1-4 Michael addition, kicking up these pi electrons as well as these in the four position in what's known as a 1-4 Michael addition. So the product of this transformation is going to be a new enolate where now we have a negatively charged oxygen at this position, a carbon to carbon double bond here. Here we have our methyl group. Now we also have a ester at this position and we still have our cyano group also coming off of this carbon here. Now the next step in this transformation will be for these electrons to come back down, allowing us to use these pi electrons to act as a nucleophile. And remember, in our first step, we formed ethanol, but we also have ethanol as our solvent, which means that what can happen is this pi electrons can come and abstract that hydrogen to regenerate our sodium ethoxide base, but also now give us a neutral compound. So the product of this transformation is going to be neutral, where we have placed our hydrogen at this position, we have our methyl group at this position, and then we also still have our ester, as well as our cyano group located at this position. So remember, we have regenerated this ethoxide, and we have now made a compound where we still have an alpha carbon hydrogen which is potentially susceptible to nucleophilic attack because it is an acidic hydrogen. And this is largely because you have these two electron withdrawing groups attached to the same carbon, which means that that ethoxide can come down and deprotonate again at that carbon position, allowing us to form a new enolate species for the second time. So now we have this compound where we have our methyl group here. We are forming our enolate at this position where this oxygen is going to be negatively charged and remember this generated a carbon to carbon double bond where we have our cyano group coming off. Now this is probably the major product that's formed. However, notice that there were other hydrogens, alpha carbon hydrogens, that they were possible to deprotonate using that ethoxide. If we deprotonated this one, that is just a reverse reaction to get back over here. However, if we deprotonated at this hydrogen, we would instead of going in this direction form a different product. So we could deprotonate this and form an enolate at this position to make a completely different product. And while it is likely to be the minor product, it is still possible that we could generate that species where we have our methyl group here, we have still left our ester intact, and that cyano group is still coming off this same carbon. So now remember, both of these products are possible, and this one is likely to be the minor product. However, this is the pathway that we need to proceed through in order to get to our final product. Because remember, in our final product, it seems like the cyano group has moved from being from this position to this carbon position. So what can happen now is these pi electrons can come down, allowing us to do what's called a Dieckmann reaction, where these carbon-carbon electrons will come and act as a nucleophile, kicking up these pi electrons and forming a fused ring system. And what will happen in addition to that is we will now have a new carbon-carbon bond that is formed. We have regenerated our carbonyl ketone at this position. Our methyl group is still here, but now we have fused a ring between this carbon at this position and this carbon on the ester. So our six-membered ring from before is still present inside of here. However, this piece is actually the newly formed piece where we have 
closed a brand new ring where we have a negatively charged oxygen at this position, remaining portion of what used to be an ester here, and this is the location of the cyano group. And then from here, what can happen is these electrons can come down and actually kick off the ethoxide as a good leaving group and thus regenerating the base that we started with. All right, so remember we did not go down this pathway, so I'm actually going to erase this now to provide myself some more room to give us our productive pathway towards this product. So once we've kicked off that ethoxide, the product of that transformation is going to be one that looks like this, where you have a ketone at this position. Remember we still have that fused ring where the methyl group is here, the cyano group is here, and now we have made another ketone at this position. And then that ethoxide, which we kicked off, can actually come in and attack that electrophilic carbon position, kicking up these pi electrons. And then the product of that transformation is going to be the formation of this quaternary carbon, where now you have a negatively charged oxygen. We have that OET, or ethoxide, which came and attacked that carbon position. And then the rest of the molecule still mostly looks the same. And don't forget, we still have that fused ring system here. Because importantly, what can happen now is these electrons, which are on this oxygen, can come down, helping us open the ring. So these electrons will come down, and rather than kicking off the ethoxide to go back in this direction, what will instead happen is that it will kick off these electrons, and in doing so, this is gonna push them over here, breaking this carbon-carbon bond, and thus moving up these electrons to this oxygen. In kind of a cascade effect where we're opening one of those rings and leaving behind a new carbon-carbon double bond. And then at this stage, you should see that now we have formed what mostly ends up being our final product. So notice, this carbonyl carbon at this position is located adjacent to the carbon that contains the cyano group. So that carbonyl carbon is negatively charged at this position, and there is a carbon to carbon double bond on the other side. On this side of that carbonyl carbon is the cyano group. Adjacent to that is the methyl group. Adjacent to that is gonna be one carbon to another carbon that is the beginning of the ester which is how we get this ester at this position. And notice, this is how the formation of our final product occurs, because all that remains to happen is that ethanol, which is present in our system, again can be deprotonated. If these pi electrons come down, these pi electrons in this carbon-carbon bond will act as a nucleophile, regenerating ethoxide and also giving us our final product. And this is a really interesting reaction because we're having a significant amount of rearrangement occurring. So the first step is deprotonation of this alpha carbon hydrogen using our base on a highly acidic proton. Subsequently doing a 1,4 Michael addition, later doing another nucleophilic attack to deprotonate ethanol, giving us an opportunity to do another enolate formation by deprotonating this alpha carbon hydrogen instead of this alpha carbon hydrogen. Hydrogen, and that gives us a product that contains a position where we can form a fused ring system by doing a Dieckmann reaction. And that Dieckmann reaction allows us to kick off the ethoxide, which later can come attack this carbonyl carbon, allowing us to make our final product through a series of nucleophilic attacks of different proton transfers. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.